So again, this is, uh, let me take you through a demo. Again, this is Jim McGann from Index Engines, and I will attempt to do a demo if my uh, VPN is working, so. So this is the interface. So, you know, with, with our partners, you know, if you look at the upper left, we have the CyberSense logo, all the Dell customers get this, other partners have branded this. Um, the beauty of this is it's everything available here is available through APIs. So we have partners that have uh, changed the colors to match their purple colors, changed their logo and rebranded it. And we're, we're happy about that. But, um, you know, on the top, you'll see the alerts here. So it, there's different, in this release, there's different types of alert. In this case, there's a threshold exceeded. So that's the new threshold feature. Um, critical alerts are infection found. So infection found means there's corruption. Um, here, it's going to give you a description of why the infection was alerted, uh, why there was an uh, alert, uh, and then down below, all the details will appear. So you're going to get the suspect files that were uh, corrupted. You can go into the different tabs and say what files were added. So a lot of times, they may go in and, and delete a bunch of files. A lot of times, what they do is they obf obfuscate, I always have trouble with that word, obfuscate the files. So the file system looks like, you know, 500 files were deleted, and then 500 files were added. In fact, they're probably the same file. It's just like the file system thinks, hey, those are new files, but they're really the same file. So here you select that 17,000 files were corrupted all on one host. So again, you know, if you're coming in Monday morning and you had an attack, you're like, well, what happened? I don't know, there's an attack. It's like, well, it's all that one host. Okay, so you know it's that one host. So what I would do is I would unplug that host off the network immediately, and then look and see what actually happened. Um, the question you had on, you know, is this stuff, is this data exportable? Down below, you're going to see all the, all the information on the, you know, the files that were corrupted. If you click on this, you'll see, you know, some of those in the presentation, I was showing you the properties of CyberSense here. It's showing you here this entropy score, you know, when it was modified, you know, and full file name. So in this case, it was the CLOP ransomware that appended the file extension on, onto the, there. So it, all this, you know, forensic details here. So you can go in, we mentioned before about exporting this information to the SIM or source systems. If I select download here, um, this is what customers would want to do. And this is really, and this could be exportable through syslog directly, right? Internet. But if I go to download, I'm going to get a, you know, a, a CSV output of all the, the corruption that exists and all the details of that. Here we go. So let me bring it up here. So here you're going to see, this is the stuff that, you know, you we were mentioning like all these like sim or these analytics tools want. Here, this is a full file listing, the backup host, the owner, you know, you're not going to have Active Directory in here. So you're just going to get, you know, you're not going to get the full uh, name of the user, you know. So all these were corrupted. You have exactly, these files were corrupted on March 20th at 1606. So, so that's the interesting thing that these, these, you know, these security folks want is, if I have, I'm going to give you all a list of all these 30,000 files that were corrupted. They were corrupted exactly this time. So the security folks could say, well, what did network traffic look like right before that time? Because that's suspicious behavior because they're going in for the kill. And if I see that type of behavior, use predictive analytics to shut that down right away. So this is the data stuff that, that they love, the telemetry data, um, you know, the size of the file, the backup sets, and so on. So you know exactly what backups they're in. So all that's downloadable there. You have all that information. Um, this backups tab is is new, so this will show you all the analysis that's happening. So here, this one's bad. So if I select this, you're going to get detail information down below. An infection was found, um, and if I click this, it's going to kick me back over to this report showing me all the you know what was that. So this is you know this is exactly how to, I would interact with the system if 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 we had an attack. So I'm like, okay, that was a bad backup. So in this case, it was four files. So I can say, hey, uh, these were not anything that interesting. Okay, so they were corrupted. I don't really need to do anything about that. I really don't care about the recovery, but I know I've got malware out there somewhere, so notify security. But you know, again, if, if you're a backup or a snapshot vendor that says, hey, there was a problem, just recover the previous snapshot, it's four files that are not important, but I'm overwriting a whole bunch of files that were updated and are, are legit. So we're not gonna have any, you have a curated recovery process here. Um, the host tab is the new one for the new threshold. This is brand new in 8.6 release. So you go in here and it's basically host specific to a host. So you can select any host. So in this case, I could select maybe the finance server and say, hey, what I want to do, see the, what I want to do is I want to look at, you know, any kind of changes in entropy or deleted files. 
I can go in here and I can customize it either by percent or by quantity. Um, and I can say, hey, I'm gonna, I wanna set an alert. Um, and you can define the alert severity. Uh, so you can, sorry about, it's hard to get to see the scroll bar here. Uh, so critical or high or medium or low. Um, so, you know, for example, you could say, you know, I wanna point this to the finance server that are, have critical data on it. And if I see large amounts of deletions, um, send me a critical alert, you know, and then it's, it's by day too, or by snapshot. So I'm like, I'm seeing a lot of deletions on Saturday. You know, that's kind of weird. So again, this isn't indicative of a cyber attack. This is just indicative of there's strange behavior going on here. So the fact that our customers are saying, you have all that information, just give me a presentation layer of, of that so I can understand what's happening. Um, the, the other one I was mentioning with the honeypots, and so on is, is specifically a threshold configuration. So I can add a threshold. So again, I can look for changes in entropy. So if, if you know, an insider or a bad actor is going to go in and say, I'm gonna start encrypting some DLLs or EXEs, you know, stuff. So I can look at entropy, I can look at deleted files, added files, uh, modified, changed or deleted, or change in file type. Um, so I, I name it, I could do it either by percentage or by number of, number of files. Um, and then I could basically just define a host and a path. So I can do either a, a, a full host, I can do a folder, or I can do an individual file. So if there's one EXE on my network router system, you know, I can say, if anybody touches that EXE, I want to know about it. So again, this is the, you know, more the security teams leaning in and saying, you know, just help me monitor to look for this unusual activity. And it's all been, you know, in the, in CyberSense. So it's something that's been available for a while, right? Okay, that is the demo. So real quick question, I guess, how, how do you do this integration, right? How do I plug CyberSense into my data sources and say, all right, start scanning? And what does that look like? Is it a hardware play where I buy a rack and I drop a rack and I just give you 40 gig connectivity or what, what does that look like? Uh, I mean, I, I can answer that. You probably can answer better. Sure. But it's we depend on the customer's backup software or snapshots to to gather the data mm -hmm. and present it to CyberSense. So it's whatever in there CyberSense will analyze. And you know, we're doing, um, you know, we have any kind of throughput or connection. I mean, it depends on the customers. They set up the connection, and it's multi-threaded. So you could have you know 10, 15, 20 different CyberSense scan threads happening at the same time. So there's a lot of, you know, it depends on the data. I mean, usually with customers, when they first deploy, you know, if it's petabytes, CyberSense needs to get through all that data for baseline day one. But then, you know, the incremental change rates, you're talking two to 3%. So, you know, at that point, you just keep up with the data on a incremental or yeah, so let me, I guess let me re reframe my question, right? So is this a SaaS offering where it's all in cloud and I'm, I guess, sending that, that data up where you're looking at my backups? Or I guess how do I integrate you into those backups so that you can then take a look? So we have, so some, one of our partners, Dell, has a, has a cloud offering with mm -hmm. AWS. Uh, and I don't know if they've announced yet. With, they're planning <laughs> on announcing another one, Azure. Um, but the, the, you know, their deployment, CyberSense can scan in all sorts of different environments. It's, it's really kind of a deployment option. Uh, and those customers just connect. I mean, it's a, CyberSense runs on a server. Mm -hmm. It could be a virtual server or a physical server. And the orchestration is what connects it to either the backup environment or the snapshot environment. I don't know if you have anything else. Might be multiple servers as well. Yeah, course. multiple servers. Yeah, we have customers that have dozens of servers depending on the data. Yeah, and, and you hit something that I also wanted to touch on. So as a lot of companies are trying to make a public cloud shift, um, for example, if I have Commvault backups inside of AWS, mm -hmm. how do you as CyberSense integrate with AWS and mm -hmm. making sure that I can scan that environment? Yeah, I mean, CyberSense can run in, in cloud, can run anywhere. It's, it's really a partnership opportunity, mm -hmm. and we are talking to a number of the cloud vendors. What we've, well, the, the, the limitations of where CyberSense runs is not a technical limitation, it's a business limitation. And we've been focused on more of the storage vendors um, and penetrating those. So, you know, the IBMs and the Dells and, and the others that you'll be hearing about shortly. Um, the cloud vendors are something that's interesting for us, so we just need to engage with those folks. But it, yeah, I mean, it, it could definitely run there. I mean, some of the challenges in the cloud is, you know, is you know access to the data and compute because CyberSense is co using compute and access, read write access to it. So, you know, it, it can get expensive in the cloud. 
you know, if you're just storing cold data in the cloud, it's cheap, right? But if you're running compute and using it as a data center, not less, less cheap, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, it's usually just more business decisions than technical decisions, but there's lots of deployment options. There's, we have some customers uh, through Dell that are running this as a, as a, uh, as a managed service for their customers. Um, and some of our other partners in fitted out also that's doing it as a managed service for them. I mean, I think managed service is kind of potentially in our future. We're looking at that as well. But I think customers would like that. I mean, not everybody has the expertise in house to be able to support this and recover from this. And managed service makes a lot of sense there. Yeah. And uh, I guess where are the, the boundaries of where CyberSense can really do, do data scanning and ingestion, right? Like, I, I know that you guys can, can can integrate with a lot of things. You said that you can do disk scanning. Uh, but for example, like if I have an OKD deployment on-prem or something, can you scan my entire OKD cluster? Or how, how does that work? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, as Jim said, you know, we can deploy pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we understand a wide range of data types at a binary level. So you'd want to make sure that there's some fit there. For example, we don't currently do mainframe. That'd be something that's outside the sphere of things that we look at. But other than that, you can deploy us in most environments. As Jim said, you can deploy straight into the cloud right now. We have images for AWS and Azure, so you can deploy there. Or you can deploy us on servers or virtual servers in the enterprise. So I'm not sure if that's answering your question. Yeah, I guess, it, do you have all of the different parsers that you would need to interpret that data and make sure that I guess it's still unmutilated and in its respected form that it should be? I think we, at a binary level, mm -hmm. certainly one of the surprises for me, I think, when I joined the company, so I'm, I'm relatively new to the company, I've been with it about six months now, was how many, over the last 20 years, the company's written all of these interpreters to interpret all of these files at a binary level. And I was surprised at how comprehensive that was. You know, the ability to go into an Oracle database, go down to the page level, and interpret data at that level. Um, I remember on my first day uh, in the company, it was sort of a matrix moment, like the movie when I went into a developer's cube, and he just had screens of hexadecimal. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, well, this is an Oracle database. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, here's the table, here's the page, <laughs> here's the entries. And so, you know, there's a lot of expertise in the company understanding different formats, um, but we're constantly adding to it. We're working on a whole bunch of medical formats at the moment, for example, to give you a specific example. So that's, for us, is a constant work in progress, keeping up with, you know, vendors like the backup vendors, which Jim said, is a, you know, constant partnership, and so we're, we're continuing to improve on there. And we're constantly opening up new environments, new proprietary file types that we can scan. So, That'll just continue over time, and as specific examples open up, in, in fact, talking to one vendor about mainframe now, that may be another format that we, we choose to ingest at a binary level. So it'll just continue to expand over time as we continue to grow. Gotcha, thanks. All right, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Lars here, I'm having a question. <clears throat> uh, when recovering uh, data, uh, do you integrate with a, with a recovery systems? Or is the CSD file everything you get, and you have to do stuff, uh, stuff manually? So uh, I think your question is a little, bit, a little bit of echo here, but do we integrate with the recovery system is the question? Yeah, yeah. so we provide, we provide all the detailed information to our partners um, on what needs to be recovered, and it's their job. They have different types of recovery deployments that they've implemented. So I think the, you know, it depends is, is the answer. It depends on what our partner has implemented. Um, you know, some of them like that are doing snapshots just want to do an immediate recovery. So they'll, they'll see they have a data management recovery tool. They'll say, hey, that previous backup had a problem. Just this is the clean one. Just recover that because it's about immediate recovery. So, so it depends. We provide all the detailed information for a curated recovery. And the partners can or cannot implement that. It depends on what they do. So it's not a it's not a black or white. It it just depends on how our partners have implemented that. So okay. Any other questions? I had one more section, which I think I covered most of it, and I have one minute and twenty three seconds left. So when I see the uh, see somebody with a microphone heading this direction, so yep. So uh, so we'll cut it off. I just you know I I just think to wrap it up the the. The level of the deep forensic analysis of what we provide has a tremendous value in recovering from an attack. 
again, if you think about good, better, best, this is by far the best. And again, everybody that we've dealt with that are very smart people that are partners and customers really look at and investigate the technology and say, no one can really build this. This, is, this took decades to actually build this level of platform. And our challenge has always been to educate um, you know, customers, partners, you know, thought leaders like yourselves as one, why it's important, you know, what's happening out there, but also the underlying technology. And what we're very proud of is the content-based analysis. And every day with CyberSense across, um, we're just doing analysis on that, it's exabytes of data being scanned across the globe. Customers have that level of confidence that the data is clean, the data is good from a ransomware attack. And that's, it's, it's hard work. I know we've, we've, we've been spending decades doing it, uh, but it's providing tremendous value to customers today. And they are recovering and, and really reaping the benefits of it, so.